Welcome, everybody. Difficult to pass after such a great keynote this morning, but uh, my subject is not ethic, but technique. <laughs> so, so if I give this talk today, it's because I truly believe in CFFI to improve maintainability and robustness of Python extension. I want to share with you my knowledge and my experience in order to convince you to give a try to a CFFI next time you need to write a Python extension. If you were at the Mondi keynote, Armin Ronacher said that CFFI would allow Python to evolve one step further. I totally agree with him and this talk will reinforce this vision. So, who am I? I'm Jean-Sébastien Bevilacqua. I write, I write free software every day, and I'm a fan of open source, ecosystem, and philosophy. You can find the big parts of my contribution on GitHub. Moreover, I work at Linagora. It's a French company that promotes free software, and it's this company which encouraged me to give this talk today. If you need support, for a free software, just contact us. We will be happy to help. So first, why do we need Python extension? I'm going to tell you my use case. So approximately one year ago, the new Vulkan API was released. Vulkan is a new graphic API that will replace OpenGL in the near future. So it's a low-level graphic API. You can create AAA games with it, and it's cross-compatible with Windows, Linux, and Android. Back at this time, I was enjoying OpenGL development, and uh, with Vulkan, I saw an opportunity to improve my 3D knowledge and low-level knowledge. Welcome for the new. <laughs> Hello. Sadly, with a C language, you can have a system error like segmentation faults. And with Python, it can be very hard to track segmentation faults. Valgrind tool can help you, but it's still a difficult task that you won't enjoy, I can assure you. So to write a Python extension in C, you have to make use of the CPython API. It allows you to create module and add functions and classes in it. So after reading the very good CPython API, I start my C extension. It was clear and I felt such confidence, but it's still C. We have to fight against malloc, free, like usual, but because it's too easy, CPython API adds the reference counting and the cumbersome API. I almost give up several times due to the amount of work. So now we are going to see exi existing solution to, to resolve the complexity of C extension. But before that, let's see ABI and API mode. From now, I will uh, often use the ABI and API words, so I need to explain clearly what I mean by these terms. API means Application Programming Interface, and ABI means Application Binary Interface. The API mode is what humans use. When you call a function, you need to know the name of the function and the argument to pass. So as a programming interface, it's all expressed in source code. The API is very similar. Think of it as a compiled version of the API. To be clear, when you write the program, you use the human API. Then, when your program is compiled, computer will access the ABI of, of the library. Maybe you wonder the goal of the ABI mode from a human point of view. We could, we could just stick to the API mode. But accessing a library with ABI mode allows you to dynamically link at runtime, and tools can be used inside an interpreted language like Python without compilation. Also, ABI, also ABI mode uh, can be interesting to use. You have to explicitly describe the binary interface, like you will see after. So let's see the existing solution to easily write a Python extension. 
Like I said just before, you can do it with the CPython C API, but it's a difficult task. The first one is Cyton. Cyton, like you may know, I think, you use an interesting approach. It can execute directly your Python code, and you can add new syntax elements by iteration. It's very good, but like you can see on the screen, when you start to add custom Cyton syntax, your Python code is no more Python. And so you lose portability, and Cyton becomes a required dependency. You should take that into account before using it. Such a high dependency can be dangerous. The, moreover, the first goal of Cyton is to improve performance of Python, not to wrap C library. Cyton can be compiled and thus supports API and ABI mode. Another solution well known is C types. C types is a built in. It's a very good point because you can be sure C types is always available. With C types, you don't need compilation, it works only on the ABI mode. You dynamically link to a library during runtime. But like you can see on screen, to C type, you need to learn a new API. You have to translate your C header to the C types API. In this example, I declare a point struct and get back the vector size function from my C library. Like you can see, it's error prone and cumbersome. If you wrap a very big library, it will be painful and it could lead you to segmentation faults because of a mismatching ABI. Another good part. Seven years ago, two very, very smart people, Armin Rigo and Matthias Fijarowski, created CFFI. You may know these names since they authored PyPy2. That's not a piece of cake. For information, PyPy is an alternative Python interpreter with a JIT. So at first, CFFI was an alternative to C types. It was working only on the ABI mode. Later, the API mode was added and rev revolutionized Python extension ecosystem. Before CFFI, to create an API mode extension for Python, you had to use the CPython C API or Cyton, which at that time was working only with CPython. With CFFI, extensions are working with CPython 2, 3, and PyPy without changing one line of your code. That's good. <laughs> now you understand ABI and API mode, I can show you how it works with CFFI. But just before that, let's introduce another concept of CFFI. This one is a lot simpler than ABI and API mode. In the inline mode, everything is set up every time you import your Python code. Yes. In the out of line mode now, you have a separate step of preparation and possibly compilation that produces a module which your main program can then import. Of course, inline mode is available only for ABI since API mode requires uh, compilation. So let's see some examples. These first examples show how to work with ABI and inline mode. This is the first feature supported by CFFI, and it's exactly what C type is done for. So we can compare it to C types. Like you can see, with CFFI, you just pass the C header to C def and open your library, that's all. No, no API to learn. It's just magic. CFFI syntax is clean and intuitive. Like I said, with C types, you declare manually the library structure. Thanks, but no thanks, C types. So I will just show you a small demo of the ABI mode. Okay. 
On this example, with, uh, with DL open uh, none, I load the entire C namespace, which contains printf function, the C, C printf functions, like that. So to let the FFI know this function, I had to give it with CDEF. Then I create a char argument, and I can pass it to the printf function. Then I print a string, a string with our char argument. Let's try it. It works, OK. So I print with the C printf function, not with the Python printf function. That makes a big difference. So like you can see, it's very simple to use. OK. So CFFE goes one step further with its API mode now. Syntax still similar, but you can notice a difference. We pass C code to CFFI with the set source function. Then you just ask CFFI to compile your module. Your Python extension is robust, fast, and easy to maintain. With this API mode, you can't have segmentation fault due to a mismatching ABI. You can if your code is not well written. Moreover, it adds the convenient features, like you can see. You can replace useless value by three dots, but I will not go into detail on this feature. So just a simple demo with the API mod. I think I have a small problem with my time. Let's uh, continue. So now the very interesting part. I'm currently building a 3D engine with Python and the new Vulkan Graphic API. Like I said to you, I created a Vulkan wrapper directly in C with the C Python C API. But if I'm here today, it's thanks to Armin Rigo. Because when I show him my Vulkan wrapper on IRC, he tells me you could, have, you could have used CFFI. And then he explained me advantages of CFFI. It took no more to meet a new challenge, write a Vulkan wrapper directly with CFFI. Was I ready to lose months of work? Uh, yes. It's a hard decision because I spent a lot of, lot of time of my wrapper in C. But I definitely made the right choice. I'm going to show you why. So, like all engineers, we love statistics. The Vulkan API is huge. Android of functions, Android of structs, Android of constants. More than 5,000 lines of code just for the C header. And there is an XML descriptor. So wrapping all this, all this API in plain C is just madness, as you can see with these numbers. More than 62,000 lines for the generated C file. But I'm crazy enough to have done it. Whereas with CFFI, it's only simple and clean Python code. To give you an idea about time, it took me one month and a half for the C version and only two weeks with CFFI. This time is only on my spare time. So I think it would have taken only one week at full time with CFFI. And moreover, when I got an open issue on GitHub, I can fix it in one hour maximum because it's just Python, clean and simple. The C version was too difficult to maintain. So how it works? In both, in both cases, I use a generator because the wrapper, like you, you, saw, like you saw, is very big. So Kronos Group, the group behind Vulkan, 
did a very great job with great work with Vulkan. All is open source, and you can contribute easily to GitHub to the spec too. The spec. <laughs> it provides an XML file that describes the API. So my generator takes this XML file as input and generates the Vulkan wrapper as output. By doing a generator, I can update the wrapper in two minutes when a new version of the API is released. So basically, here are the steps. First, uh, I load and pass XML definition. Then I generate the data model. Then I generate the Python module with Jinja2. Jinja2 is a template engine. I think you know it. It's very famous in the Python community. So passing is done with XML2Dict package. XML2Dict is a Python module very good to pass an XML file without edge. So it transforms your XML dict into a hierarchical Python dictionary. So the first step is done. We have a good data model, easy to pass. So we can pass it to the Jinja2 template. I focus only on this part because that's where the two modules differ. What you see here is the folder structure of the C extension. So we compare the C Python C extension with the CFFI extension for the same wrapper Vulkan API. So, la so here, what you see is the folder structure of the C extension. Like you can see, there are, there are too, much thing, too much things involved. So to keep code maintainable, I had to split it up. Line of code is a good indicator because uh, you can see it's very huge, but what is more important is the complexity of the code. Like you can see, it's huge. Moreover, with C code, you have to manage memory yourself, and this is very, very error prone. Now, the same thing with CFFI. It's very different. Despite of its looks, what you see on screen means a lot. With CFFI, I did not need to think about architecture. It was very obvious, all in one file. One more point for CFFI. But you don't have to trust my words when I say CFFI is better. Let's see it in action, and you will understand. Constant is the easier part, and both cases are simple. In C, we just, pass, we just use the CPython C API to add constant to our mod module, but there is a difference. We have to take care about the variable type. With CFFI, it's just Python, and it's dynamically typed variable. But only with constant, you don't go far away. Next step is to create binding for strict. Here's the difficulty. But in Python, there is no strict concept. So there are classes which is similar. With CPython, you have to handle the new, the del init get for each member. And I don't handle the set. So you can't, with my, wrapper, my C wrapper, you can't update an object after it, it is initialized. You have to use malloc to allocate memory for your object in the new. In del, you must free your object. In init, you have to pass each parameter with CPython utils function, which is, can be tricky. And in get, you have to convert your C strict to Python object. I can assure you, it takes me a lot of time to figure out how to properly do it. Code is so long that I can't show you an example on screen. With CFFI now, it's 40 line. CFFI handles for us object allocation and deletion. I just use plain Python to handle all strict initialization in a generic way. I repeat to be sure that you understand, this generic new function works for all my structs. With CPython API, the step I showed you must be done for each strict, and there are hundreds of structs in the Vulkan API. When you really realize these benefits, you just fall in love with CFFI. So what I showed you until here is the API mode. Let's try the fast and robust API mode now. 
we are going to wrap a C library with the API out of line mod. This mod is robust and fast, but you need compilation. I don't know if you know uh, ShatterC, it's a library we are going to wrap. So ShatterC is a free software done by Google and gives you the ability to compile GLSL language to SpearV binary. GLSL and SpearV formats are used to create programs for your graphic card. If you just do some 3D development, you may know this language. So I usually, to create a, an extension with the API mod, I usually, I usually create a folder dedicated to CFFI that I name CFFI build, and I recommend you to do so to keep a clean separation of concerns. So in this, on the screen, chatrc.h contains chatrc function signatures and strict. We just copy past the header provided by Google and CFFI handles it. I don't need to, to modify it in this case. PyChatrc build folder is used to generate the Python extension. So next we have the PyChatrc folder containing our wrapper. And finally, we'll take a look at the setup with a special feature of CFFI. So the definition first. Like you see, we first read content of the chatrc header and pass it to the, code, to the cdef function. That's all for the definition. Sometimes you need to rewrite your header, but in that case, the header is so clean that I can give it like that to CFFI. So three lines, and CFFI knows how to handle this library. It's very beautiful. <laughs> so now the building part. With these few lines, we tell CFFI to compile the source with statically linked library chatrc combined, and to name the extension PyChatrc. Chatrc combined is a static library that we have to compile before running this CFFI part. I don't show you how because it's not directly linked and related to CFFI. You can look on, on GitHub if you are interested in. Like you can see, there is no C code involved. We just tell CFFI to open a Python portal to the ShellRC library. Here again, it looks like magic. So now we have to use it. Currently, our extension is ready, but we remain dependent of CFFI. It means that, for example, if you want to pass a pointer to a function, you have to use the CFFI uh, utils function. But when using your wrapper, you, your users shouldn't need to know CFFI. It's just a dependency. So we are going to write a small Python code, especially for that. This code is located in PyCharrC init and is loaded uh, automatically when you import your module. So this is the init file. So first we load our extension PyCharrC, which contains ifify and lib modules. So the lib modules contains all functions and strict related to our library. And ifify is used to interface with our library. Let's examine the compile into SpearV function. Remember, the ShaderC library allows you to compile GLSL to SpearV. So this is this function. All functions defined in our extension can be accessed through lib, the lib object. If you take a look at the compile line, here, the third line, we can pass pure Python types like int or string and CFFI converts it for us. It's clean and intuitive. A small note, with Python 3, string, string must be bytes. Next, ShaderC returns a pointer to us. We have to tell CFFI to convert it to a byte Python object. Like that, I can use it in my program with NumPy or something else. So we first get back the pointer and the length but we can't directly copy the data to a byte in Python because byte type is immutable. So we have to copy data into a byte array, a temporary byte array, 
and pass it in our bytes object. If you take a look at the FFI one mem move function, it's very similar to the mem copy C function, but directly in Python. So here, I'm doing memory manipulation directly in Python. Good, that's good, CFFI. So in bonus, CFFI provides a setup tools extension. You just add the entry CFFI modules and your extension will be built by setup tools. It's a good way to package your module. So let's see uh, the example. Okay, so we can enjoy the result. Let's play a simple game, very simple, just for the demo. So like you will see, I'm using the new shiny Vulkan API with the Vulkan wrapper and the PyShaderC wrapper to convert GLSL code and put it inside the graphic card. So this simple game is written fully with Python and make use of the new shiny Vulkan API. Yeah. <laughs> so very, very simple game. <laughs> Not impressive, but we can do impressive things now. Before finishing this talk, I have to thank two very special persons. Without them, this talk would not exist. So please welcome the creators of CFFI, Armel Ringo and Maciej Fijalski. I think they did a lot for our Python community and they are very valuable person because I talked with uh, them yesterday. Very nice. And thank you so much for your incredible work. You make the greatness of Python and you deserve uh, our respect. Thank you again. <laughs> so I hope that like me, you enjoyed this talk. If one day uh, you need to use a C library or you need to improve performance of your code, Please think about CFFI and thank you for your attention and have a nice day. If you have questions, yes. All right, do we have any questions? Just to, thank you for the talk. Just a quick one. So the demo was Python 2, right? Not 3, because 3 takes bytes, not strings. Can you repeat, please? Because with the echo, I don't... Uh, uh, the demo was using Python 2, is that uh, correct? With Python 3. 3.6. Because um, strings are passed as bytes. No. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. Um, is this only interfacing to C, or can you interface to C++ as well? So currently, I think it's only C, but you can, when you have a C++ library, because PyShaderC uh, is a C++ library, you can do a C header for your C++ library, and then you use it with CFFI. Hi, how about uh, interfacing an existing library that ha does its own garbage collection? Uh, can I, I, I will come because I don't understand from it. Uh, good question, maybe I mean can help us because it's very specific. <laughs> So, so, so garbage collection. Well, you need to, to you need to do it completely manually. It's a story. Like, however, however garbage, 
whatever garbage collection is needed by by your C library, you need to do it manually. There is no automatic garbage collection at the level of CFFI, simply. Hi, uh, is there any specific pain with handling callbacks, functions, stuff like that? Uh, with the recent version of CFFI, there is a very good feature about callback, so you can, I, I handle the, I, with the Vulkan wrapper, there is a lot of callback. If you know Vulkan API, I don't know. And uh, I handle them, I can generate them automatically. So you can take a look on, the, on my GitHub. <laughs> if you need callback with the FFI, it's a good example. Well, if there are no more questions, I can't see any last minute things. All right, uh, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, let's give a hand to John Sebastian. Thank you.